Hello and welcome to A Bit A Lot, where we talk a bit about a lot. In this episode, we'll be looking at both animal testing in science, as well as in medicine. No graphic content will be shown in these videos. We will leave it up to you if you wish to do more research into the specific conditions that animals are put through in animal testing. Animal testing in science and medicine is probably the most widely known about, but there's some information that you may not know. For example, it's currently the law for companies to test new drugs on animals before going to human trials. A huge amount of animal research is basic medical research conducted in facilities such as universities. Those animal tests are the choice on the part of the researcher, as no one is forcing them to do that research. In terms of the kind of animal research that you would argue has to be done, that would be in the area of regulatory safety toxicology, which is only around about 10% of the animals that are used. And when I say that it has to be done is that there's usually a legal or a regulatory requirement for that to be done. So that's particularly why animal protection organisations focus on that sector because that's the sector where companies do have their hands tied to some extent. But the rest, the 90%, the rest of animal research that's done across Europe and around the world is pu purely voluntary on the part of researchers. They have a choice to make. A huge amount of animals are also used in universities, around about 50% are used for basic medical research in universities across the world. So why are 90% of animal tests being done voluntarily? Well, I think scientists get caught into a trap thinking that there's, there's no alternative to testing in a, in a whole organism, which is often their excuse for using animals. They need to test in a, in a, in a whole organism. But they're testing in the wrong organism. So, yeah, they're getting some research questions answered, but are they the right questions? Are they the right answers? I would argue it's not worth doing it if you're not going to get any information that's relevant to humans. And I think it's a completely false assertion that people that use animals use is that they have to do this work because they're going to develop cures for Parkinson's or Alzheimer's or, or something. Because a lot of the time what they're doing is actually just basic medical research, answering interesting questions that might one day lead to something that then might one day help Parkinson's. And that's just not good enough. They could be doing something else related to Parkinson's disease that would be both humane but possibly more effective as well. So what does the 10% of animal tests required by law consist of? Unfortunately, it's a legal requirement to test on animals before you put a new medicine on the market. Uh, there are several animal tests that have to be done, in particular uh, a test in two species, typically a rat or then a dog and then a monkey. And that's called the second species test. But I certainly don't feel comfortable uh, knowing that drugs have been tested on animals. That doesn't give me any sense of confidence at all. So how effective is animal testing in medicine? One of the issues is that animal testing is not good enough. And so whilst it, it persists, it's not actually protecting human health. So I don't particularly feel safe taking a drug knowing it's been tested on in a rat or a monkey. But that's just the way it is. So we do need to replace animals with something. But what we need to get over is the hurdle that those animal tests are perfect and they are actually protecting humans and giving us all the information we need. So I would argue that we're already in a, in a state of crisis in terms of our drug development and testing. That animal testing isn't doing the job that we need it to do. But clearly we do need to do something. You can't just take a, a compound that you don't know anything about and give it to a human. That would be not right. And are regulators willing to replace animal testing with alternatives? Unfortunately, that you know, they're very resistant to change. Uh, they really want to see tests in animals before they go into a market. I think it's a feeling that they want to feel secure, they want to feel like they've done the very best they can, even though they know full well that the animal tests aren't giving them all the information that they need. And are laboratories inspected by authorities on a regular basis? Now the legal requirement is only that a third establishments have to be inspected every year in each country and for some establishments that might only be once so once every three years we would say that's not good enough and if you see the investigation footage of the recent investigation in Germany you'll see that that's got some massive problems 
One thing that stood out to Cruelty Free International, amongst many other issues, during the investigation was that the cage sizes that the animals were kept in were too small. As the investigation showed scenes that were considered by many animal rights organisations as well as by members of the public as inhumane, there was a public outcry to end these conditions in laboratories. So what happens to labs or companies that don't follow animal testing laws? If a company breaks their animal testing laws within each country can vary. Some countries will issue a fine, might be a few thousand euros. Some countries, for example even the UK, we say their sanctions are really weak. Most of the time the researchers get literally a slap on the wrist and a letter telling them to pull their socks up. Sometimes a licence is withdrawn from an, from an individual or very, very rarely an establishment, but that doesn't happen very often. So that the sanctions, the penalties across Europe, we, we would say, are just far too weak. And how can the public make a difference? It is quite difficult for the general public to, to make a difference in terms of animal testing because it's so hidden and also a small proportion of it is required by law. So you can't actually make an ethical choice when uh, using your medicines, for example, which can cause some people some distress when they realise that the medicines they're taking may have been recently tested on animals. But where there is a choice, where companies have a choice, you can choose to shop cruelty free. And using our Leaping Bunny logo, you can look for cosmetics and now household products that have not been recently tested on animals. So, in summary, there may not be a lot that we, the public, can change in regards to animal testing in science and medicine. But as Dr. Katie says, we can make a difference in other ways by buying Leaping Bunny approved cosmetics and household products. Please like, subscribe and comment on the video. We would love to hear your opinion and whether you shop cruelty free. And please do let us know what other topics you'd like to know a bit about. We hope you enjoyed the video and learned a bit about a lot. See you in the next one.